Hi there! If you watch this video, you are most probably interested in to buy this lens or you already have the lens and you are interested in about how you can work with that and how you will bring the file from A to Z to uh, YouTube somewhere on a platform where you can watch uh, VR 180 degrees videos. And uh, what I will show you here are just the steps I am using so uh, that I can public uh, this kind of videos to YouTube or wherever I want. So this uh, video is split in some parts. First of all, it will be, I will show you some uh, tips, but uh, you have to know if you are working with the R5 or the R5C in this lens, then uh, I will show you how to use the EOS VR utility and some things what uh, I don't like so much about this tool. Uh, after that, I will show you how I insert 3D text in DaVinci Resolve and also how I uh, can check the placement of the text with the Oculus by connecting it to the computer. And uh, then uh, you will also see how I export these 8K videos. So uh, yeah, all the timelines I use are in 8K. And uh, after this step, uh, the final step will be just you'll have to use the VR180 creator. And uh, this will prepare whatever we made before so that you can upload it to YouTube and uh, then we are done. So first of all, I want to give you some tips. So if you have this lens, then uh, the microphones are not really good. I mean, this microphone is very, very short and it's the one you don't need to connect any cable. But when I bought it, I thought it would be a little bit behind from this 180 degrees. But with this lenses, everything that is exactly in 180 degrees will be in the image. You record that. And so also this camera here, the front part will be in the image. So it's not the best micro to use with this camera. What you also have to know is you'll have to use some kind of, tri of tripod where the camera can be placed much more ahead of the legs. Because if you don't um, do that, you will have all the legs in the image. So I use something like this. I have two uh, solutions and this one is the one. So you see I can just put it like this and some counter weight and then I can work with that. But uh, yeah, it's the same thing like with the micro that if you don't do that, you will have to remove it afterwards from the videos. And uh, the second solution I have is uh, also with a V-mount battery, uh, which also has a power delivery. So you can work with 8K60 uh, in RAW files. And here you can just put this part here to a tripod. And so the camera will be in front and you can work a little bit with the legs so that they won't be in the image. Then what you will have to set up in the camera because it's uh, much easier uh, if you have uh, enabled that. Then what you also have to do is you will have to enter into the R5 and go into the monitor setup here. I hope it will show it. And uh, then you will have to go into the fifth point and function five in custom display one and here you will have to set the level to tilt and roll. When you set it to the tilt and roll, you will see that here you will have a level where you see if the image is straight. I mean here this dot has to be in the center and this dot down here also has to be in the center. So you see how it works and yeah. So you can just level it with your uh, tripod and if both dots are exactly in the center, then you are ready to shoot. Then uh, you of course need to work with a CF Express card because um, also the software we are using uh, later uh, needs a uh, raw input. And uh, yeah, you will have the best quality, of course, if you use uh, raw. Then if you have moving objects, I would suggest to go with uh, raw light 
in 60 FPS 8K. Um, some other thing what I prefer is uh, when you use all, again this tripod or anything what you shoot with this uh, VR um, fisheye lens. Uh, the best thing is if you shoot not too close to the bottom but somewhere where your eyes would naturally be. So uh, it will give you the perspective uh, like uh, yeah, like uh, it is life. I mean I tried to do the cut perspective and then you have the feeling that your head is just cut in the bottom and uh, it don't feel nice. Especially not if you're also walking around. And if uh, you plan to walk with, um, with this setup, then of course use a gimbal. And I would say the best result is just if you go in front or backwards. Uh, and not if you do sideways things. I mean, if you do it like that, you will get sick. I get sick if I do that and it's not nice to work with that. So don't do these mistakes or of course you can try it, but I think the result will not be what you are expecting. Then I would also suggest that you should uh, connect a power bank with PD uh, so that you can get the 60 FPS from the 8K. And this, uh, yeah, especially if someone is walking, I think these are just the first uh, tips I want to give you. So uh, yeah, after these tips, I would say you are ready to go with this setup and a tripod uh, just out and film. After the footage you took with these two eyes from this uh, double-eyed lens, you will have to put the left and the right eye together. And the easiest way to bring it to the right position is just to use the EOS VR utility from Canon. Here you can see some files with this fisheye and let's take this one over here. So you see it is 15 seconds and uh, what you want to do is to make the parallax correction. You could also make a horizontal correction but every click will take some time. You see, okay, now it, I will remove that. At the beginning I always made the lens mask so that you won't see the lens here and uh, now I started to uh, not use that because it's one click more. And the only thing what you see is this little part here. Then with this tool, uh, it is a tool that you have to pay. It's not so expensive. So uh, because it brings me a lot of saving time, therefore I use that. Then you can go inside here into the raw settings. And I usually set it just to Cinema Gamut and Canon Log 3 so that later in DaVinci Resolve I can use these settings, the Cinema Gamut and the Canon Log 3, to make my LUT uh, corrections. And then uh, you could also change the ISO here. Uh, yeah, you can see if I would say it is BT709 and you output it to this, then you will get some colors which are more like it was and uh, yeah, just you can make the settings you like here. But I prefer, as I said before, to let it on Cinema Gamut and Canon Log 3. The bad thing is, in this program, you cannot just copy the values you have here and go into the next one and say, okay, copy these values I have to the rest of the files. This would save so much time, but you have to enter and open every one and then just click for, from the VR correction and uh, everything that you have to set, it will take time to render it and to make the corrections. Uh, I usually don't uh, select the horizontal correction, I leave it to the parallax correction. But maybe the result would be a little bit better if you also do this kind of uh, correction here. Now after the corrections, where you have to go through to every of these files and it takes a lot of time, but not so much like if you do the correction in DaVinci Resolve or in any other program. And so let's go here. Uh, after the corrections, you will have to say uh, it should render it. And then you have here the CPU and uh, selection or the GPU. And it is much, much faster if you use the GPU over the CPU. Um, and if you have inserted an NVIDIA GPU, uh, you will have these options here. Uh, we are on a Windows machine, Windows 11, and um, 
I can uh, make the output to DPX, RGB 10-bit or 16-bit. I could make H264420, but it's 8-bit. Here I have to say I'm not happy with the quality. Also here I'm absolutely not happy with the quality. And this is the quality I usually uh, choose. Uh, the HEVC 444MP4 10-bit. Now with this one, let's see uh, Excel I made, uh, render times here. Uh, you will see that uh, here for this video, this 9E9, uh, uh, what is um, the size of this video is 5 gigabytes and it's 15.3 seconds. Now, um, I uh, tested the output of all of these different uh, settings and once when I was using the GPU and once when I was using the CPU. Now, uh, you can see here the render times I got. So that means for the 10-bit VR with the GPU, uh, it took for the 15 seconds, uh, 1 minute and 21 uh, seconds. And uh, so it is in seconds, 81 seconds. Uh, the GPU 8-bit, the H264420, took 65 minutes and um, when I was rendering it um, to the high quality 16-bit uh, DPX RGB it took 4.35 minutes. Now the downside of this one I have to say the quality here in these two file types is great. It's I like it really much but from 5 gigabyte file input raw file uh, after the rendering, you will have in this quality 174 gigabyte uh, of data just for 15.3 seconds. If you go to 10 bit, you will still have uh, 116 gigabyte. And sorry, I cannot work with this kind. So it's more like a fun thing to see really good quality, uh, but I cannot work with that because it's too large. And I don't know if uh, someone has so much capacity <laughs> really to work with these two kind of uh, file types. Okay, for a short uh, one minute uh, thing, maybe you will have the capacity, but for everything that is longer, I wouldn't go with that. Now, I have to say the quality from the XAVC 444 10-bit is nice. It is a little bit less than this really good quality over here. Um, but uh, also the speed of the rendering for 15 seconds, it takes 121, is okay. So this would be the uh, format I would go with. But there is one issue with this, with, uh, this one. When I take uh, some um, uh, footage where I am walking, then I would say every minute I will have one file which is when I work like this, then the file will be here and the rest will continue here. So it has some kind of error of mistake when I do the rendering with my uh, 4090 GPU. Um, when I do exactly the same rendering, uh, again to each uh, HEVC 444 10-bit, but I use the uh, CPU and uh, we have this one here, then the file size is about similar and I won't have this error. The downside here is that for this 15 minutes uh, when I let the CPU render, uh, then it will take 8 minutes 16. So it is uh, 7 times longer uh, than uh, when I render it with the with the GPU. So I hope that Canon will bring an update to this software, um, just that the rendering will be fixed and won't have uh, this error with just, uh, it's annoying if you have someone working here and then one file back here and the rest is again here and every minute you will have one of these errors inside and I really don't know what Canon is doing here. So I wish that Canon will make some fixes to this program they have up here. The first thing is that, just fix the, this error in the rendering from the GPU. And the other thing is, please make a modus that you can uh, make a correction to one file and then 
cut and paste it to everything else what you want, but is similar. This would save a lot of time. And uh, yeah, you see if you have uh, 50 videos and uh, 15 seconds of them would uh, need eight minutes, then it's a never ending story. Now, if 15 seconds take a little bit more than one minute, I can handle that. And uh, now again, with the CPU, it was uh, somehow stable. The, every format takes between eight and nine, eight minutes and nine seconds to nine minutes and 10 seconds for 15.3 minutes. While with the GPU, the formats up here had been much, much faster than if I would use the very, very good file uh, format, which yeah, I don't think you can use. Yeah, who can use 15 seconds with 174 gigabyte? I think no one. I tried uh, also to work with the AMD GPU with the 7900 XTX. And uh, I was really, really surprised as um, in the export options, you will not have the XAVC 444 MP410 bit. And uh, it surprised me even more because you have the option, wait, if I say use as a processor the CPU, which is the same CPU, uh, the AMD 7950, and then you can say export it and it will export it to the XAVC444 just by using the CPU. Uh, but if you have inserted no NVIDIA, but the AMD graphic card, you have not this option, not even for the, for the CPU. And I also would say Canon has uh, an error here. So I wish these three corrections in this program and it would be much, much better. That's about this program right over here. And so uh, we can move over to DaVinci Resolve to show you how you can use this material and to insert some uh, 3D uh, text in it. And now I will show you how you can add some 3D text in the files we took with this camera, with uh, EOS R5C and the fisheye objective, the RF 5.2 millimeters dual fisheye objective. We are filming on the R50. I am working with DaVinci Resolve and uh, after the footage, we converted it with the EOS VR utility. And so we are taking the ready file from the EOS VR utility and uh, I just inserted here one sample of my files, a file from Maldives. And uh, this one is the one we will add some 3D text. For that, we have to go into the Fusion. And here we are working with the Control tab. In the Control tab, we have to add some text, uh, 3D text. Add. Then uh, we will add spherical uh, camera. Okay, what is nice, it merges this to, uh, together in with uh, Merge 3D. Then uh, let's add some light, uh, spotlight. Uh, when, to combine these uh, three things with uh, Merge, we will have to render it. And so we will add with Control Space a render 3D. Let's connect it here. What we have rendered, we will have to split it for left and right eye. So let's add also a splitter. Let's add a crop. Let's add, no, let's set some settings in the crop. The X size has to be set to the same like the Y size and the X offset, we will set it half offset from the file size. Uh, so it's 2048, 2048. And now this crop, we will copy it and paste it. And okay, we will have to set it parallel and just combine the render 3D with the splitter. 
After that, we will add a combiner. And let's combine both crops to the combiner and then we will have to uh, merge it with the media out. So let's add a merge. And uh, then we will input the media in to the merge and let's just go out again in the media out. Now um, you see the image over here, the media out has this uh, white dot. If it is marked and you press the two, you can remove it and remove it. But I will want to see the media out always what will be the final result. So to see what we are doing with the text, I will just um, yeah show here the Merge 3D. Now first of all we will add some text, let's say a sample text and then I will change the color to show later something with the Lutz. So I change the color to yellow, then let's add some extrusion so to bring a depth on the text and I like it better when it has uh, some subdivisions so it will be a little bit nicer looking and let's do some bevel things and yeah I would say this is it for the 3 heat text. Okay it's not placed right now but the placement will be uh, I will show that later. Then the spherical camera um, has to be set to stereo and uh, let's say like here you see it has two eyes exactly like we also have two eyes. The separation of these eyes is uh, 6.4 uh, centimeters and this can be set here with eye separation put to 6.4. So it's 0 0.064 to make this. Then let's go into the renderer. Per default it is a software renderer but uh, you can see here I have a good computer so the CPU is a uh, 16 core 32 thread uh, AMD Ryzen 9 7950X and um, I use the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 with 24 gigabyte of RAM. Already you see it uses 17 gigabyte of them and then I have inserted 128 gigabyte DDR RAM. The speed Wait, you don't see it right now, but it is set to a slow 4200. The RAM is uh, 6000 megahertz, but because I'm getting some issues, sometimes it crashes. Uh, no, with uh, 128, I cannot go over 5000 megahertz. And um, so just to keep it stable, I um, leave it on 4200. So this is, I think, the sweet spot for this setting with 128 GB of RAM. Now, the Render 3D, I will set it to OpenGL, as we have good hardware, but can do that. Then the camera will be the spherical camera, as we said before, spherical camera, and it has to be stacked so that the eyes will stack together. Um, then also we will enable the lighting here and shadows here. But the image is quite big so we have to enter here to the image and uh, I will show it here. If we go left to show on the left side the renderer. Oh it takes a lot of time and you see the RAM is increasing. Then you will realize we have a real real big file 32768. So to lower that a little bit, we will set the, we will remove the outer resolution and then just copy the high to the white. Copy and go over here, white. And now it renders again and it should bring it a little bit down. You see, it made it to 16,384. Uh, what we can see is that everything stays black. And the reason is because uh, the spotlight is so close and if you remove the spotlight a little bit more back, let's also remove the camera. Ah, if you press control then with the mouse wheel you can uh, make it smaller or bigger and 
only with the mouse wheel you can go up down or left right if you yeah you have a lot of uh, things what you can do then if you press the shift and you will play with the mouse wheel you can go left and right you can rotate it on this direction and yeah so you can play around with all of these things you can see over here you have two lines from the camera from the stereo camera and these are the two eyes which are separated 6.4 uh, centimeters so the left eye and the right eye are looking a little bit different but we need that to get this realistic kind of view in the VR 180 um, reality. The crop is set correctly, we said it before. Then the combiner is, uh, yeah, you can swap it if later you will put the Oculus glasses and if you see that the text is not looking really great but it gets you confused then most probably you will have to swap it. Uh, I usually swap it here in the splitter, just press this one and then the text will be nice. But you will have to do this test, uh, yeah, just uh, that you will be sure uh, you won't output garbage. Now we can't see anything right over here, we just see the output without any text. And this is caused because uh, what we produced here is on the background and here you can see it is a sample text and if we insert this one here or here I have always to play a little bit around to get it right so now we have it like I wanted it and the text is not placed right now like I want it. So let's go again here and let's play a little bit around and uh, yeah, just mark on the text and take it a little bit more far. Then let's play also with this wheel over here, the rotation. And here you can rotate it. Okay, this looks better than before. Then you can also scale it here, but I will leave it like it is. Then here's the placement. Let's put it a little bit more down. Here, you see the green axis has to be a little bit rotated over there so that it will look like it is on this platform right over here. Now, if it is placed correctly, you won't see it unless if you set the oculus glasses or something similar on and uh, you can use them also in DaVinci Resolve. Then you will have a third bubble here uh, if you connect it and uh, then you can immediately see if the placement is right. Like it is um, made now, uh, you will have one little issue with the oculus glasses so you won't see it like a 180 uh, degrees virtual reality but like a 360 degrees. And, um, uh, but for the placement of the text, you will exactly see if it is placed right or not, or if you have to swap also the text. Now, what we also see is that we have black text. Uh, we will have to go to the light. This is the light and bring this more back. Now you see everything is okay, but you see the colors are not nice. So like always, you could go into the color and let's add a look. I made a lot for this kind of uh, things and okay it's a little bit too dark so we can bring the colors up. This could be the final result but as you see here the text gets white because of the loot and I don't want that so I will reset this note and uh, let's enter again into the fusion control tab and make a loot. So file load, add a file load, and this has to be placed, wait, let's remove everything here, and let's go with the media in into the file load, then add this to the merge and put the merge to the output. So now you can enter the file load 
and it will only affect the media in, so the footage you have here, and not the text that comes after the file load. Uh, yeah, for that you can go again and select the same one like before, and I said this one before, so here also you can do some pre-gain and uh, yeah, play a little bit with the colors, but uh, yeah, this is uh, what I wanted to do. You see here the text is not placed exactly like I wanted, so let's go again back to the text and uh, let's play the placement and bring it a little bit back and then rotate it again a little bit just No, that was much too much, yeah. So yeah, this is about like I want the text. So it looks now like if it is on the platform. So uh, now if we go back into the edit, here you will see that it looks like I wanted before. If you want, you can also enter the color tab and just play with the settings of the normal color tab. But now let's see the editing, if it plays okay with the speed. So here you see it is in real time. It's not all, always in real time, but right now we are lucky that it does it. Sometimes it falls down and it plays only with 5 FPS, but here you see it is still playing quite nice. Let's go into the color tab. Here, yeah, it is real time. After the main video editing, I also want to see if the text is placed really on the right position. And for that, I will have to use this Oculus glasses. And uh, I switched the camera because uh, I was wrong about the power delivery power bank. And uh, when you are filming with the R50, the battery status will show um, like it is full and grayed out. And so I was uh, thinking that it is taking power from the power delivery uh, external power bank, but I was wrong. And so I had just now to switch the camera as the battery was empty and I wasn't able to work with it. So it is charging now. I only have one LPE17. And so I will order other two batteries from them and uh, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed that it don't work, uh, yeah. But let's continue here to show you how you can check if the text is placed properly on the video. So for that, you will have to start your Oculus glasses. Uh, first of all, you can start here the Oculus app or whatever it is. And uh, yeah. Then let's power on here. It is starting. Uh, before we do anything else, we can enter again here into the fusion. And uh, you will see that uh, if you're over here, you just have two of these dots. And now we are trying to make the Oculus to become a third dot, the second one in the center. So uh, I will have to... Now I will try to record whatever I see in the Oculus. So camera, um, uh, take a video, start. Now we will have to enter the settings and go to the system. And in the system, we will have to start the quest link. And here, quest link start. Just start this one. Then you have to say start. And now it starts up. Okay, now we're in. And Oculus Air Link has to be activated. So, yeah, it is activated. So now we have done the step one for that. And you will see here, we still only have two of these outputs. So, uh, I mean the left uh, monitor and the right one. So I will close it and I will start DaVinci Resolve again. And I think then it should be uh, inserted. Come on DaVinci. Now it starts. 
Again, over here you can see in the task manager uh, the amount of uh, memory we are using. And let's make it smaller. Bring it over here. So, okay. Now you see we have a third bar. And here, instead of the second one, we can also make an output to the other monitor. And this is the monitor. Let's go over there. And you see now the text. And yeah, I would say it is like I want it. Yeah. So the check was okay. I would say this was already the check. I hope you can see it. I'll have to look over there. <laughs> Here it looks uh, like uh, if we are on the wrong side, but in the glasses everything looks fine. So, yeah. Uh, the wrong thing is that here you can see a 360 degree so you have to switch your head quite a lot left and right but um, yeah for me it was enough that I can see it works now uh, if we are here we can also play the video and I will let it play because I want to show you that uh, in this mode the RAM is really increasing now, if you would have only 32 GB RAM, the system would be struggling even much more. It's not fast. You see the files are just really slow while it is rendering. And the RAM is increasing 73, 76 GB RAM, 81, 83. So you really need the, I think, 128 GB RAM I have here. And now it stays about, yeah, now it falls down to about 80 gigabyte RAM as it is playing. Ah, because it started again from the beginning. So I had here once over 100 gigabyte RAM used and that means, yeah, for this kind of work it is better to have good RAM. Now I don't need the Oculus anymore because I made the check and I saw it is there where I want it. So I can close this and uh, I will also close here the Oculus software close it. So now I will stop here the playing and uh, if you enter now the edit page I think it will be slow. Play and you see it struggles 6.5 files per second and so I will close it because it used so much RAM and you have to enter the process and to kill DaVinci. You see 62 gigabyte RAM but I have closed the DaVinci Resolve, or is it still there? Somehow it is still there, but let's kill it here. So after killing it, we can start it again. And now we are back here. Wait, let's make again the window like I want it, wait, here, here and here. So, and let's play it. Now you see we are again back to real time. So if you use a lot of RAM, then the speed will fall down. And also let's go again back to the color grading. And here if you play it, you see again here, we are still real time because we are at 30 FPS. If I would have a timeline of 60 FPS, I think it will stay at about 54. Then it will not be real time, but it's good enough to edit here in WG Resolve. Just you have to watch that the RAM is not full. Now, after that, uh, we can show how fast the delivery is. Here you can already see it. I made before some tests and uh, yeah. Let's say it this way. Uh, you will have to take uh, the output to MP4. If you don't do that, the next program what you need is the VR180 Creator. And this will not operate if you let it to move to uh, anything like QuickTime or so. So you have to 
take MP4 and uh, I will make H265 and, uh, and take the NVIDIA then 8K output as you can see the file project no project settings I have everything on 8K and it's real time in 8K with this computer so let's say cancel and uh, the quality I set it not to the best but to a restrict to 200,000 and I think this is better than if you use the best so let's go over here and add to render check here and let's see for this 17 seconds uh, how long it will take you see it is at 30 fps 29 30 so it is almost real time okay it took 18 seconds for this 17 seconds of rendering so that means if you have a 10 minute video it will be yeah, finished maybe in 11 minutes something like that the next step what you have to do is to open the VR180 creator and here you will have to insert the file we just created uh, here in the VR180 test it is this file the untitled so let's take this one and just insert it now uh, yeah it is left right so if you will make up down it will be wrong it has to stay at left right and then 180 degrees video and uh, here this is what YouTube will make a mono um, preview and uh, yeah this is the input file and this is about how it will come out now the next thing you have to do is just export this one and you can say where you want it here untitled it, inject it, export it. Okay, it's done. This export is always very, very fast, but yeah, it has to be an input MP4 file. So now it is ready to upload to YouTube or to any other um, uh, platform where you can watch uh, VR videos. I would say this was this part. And uh, I hope you learned something and um, yeah, for me, if I had this video at the beginning, then I wouldn't have to lost a lot of uh, hours just to find out all these things. I hope you will subscribe and hope to see you next time. You can write me what kind of video you want uh, next time. Uh, yeah, what is also easy is to move the text. I mean, you can say it should move from here and come over here. This wouldn't be any problem. But yeah, this is just a little uh, step. I think most of you will know that. So uh, I would say goodbye.